Hi. Now, if you watch my earlier tutorial on resultant forces, this example here is a follow-up to it, which you might like to try. What we've got is two forces of 5 newtons and 6 newtons act on a particle. The two forces are inclined at an angle of 100 degrees. And what I want you to do is find the resultant force and the angle at which it acts to the 6 newton force. So you might like to have a go, just pause the video and come back and check to see if your solution agrees with mine. OK, well let's just see how you got on if you did have a go. First of all I'd want to draw a diagram. Now this problem can be solved in one of two ways. It can either be solved by using the triangle of forces or you could do it by resolving. And I'm going to show you both methods. We'll start off with the triangle of forces first of all. So what I'd do is we've got our particle here say and we've got our forces 6 newtons I'll make out to the right there, 6 newtons and we've got the one of 5 newtons. Okay, And they're inclined at an angle of 100 degrees to one another. Now if I'm doing this by the triangle of forces we've got to think well what is this equivalent to? Well we can take our particle and we can think of this then as 6 newtons acting out to the right. So just put the 6 newtons there, followed by 5 newtons coming back like so. Okay, 5 newtons that way. And that means that our resultant, which is bound to act through here, somewhere in between these two forces, would be from here to this endpoint. So that would be my R newtons, the resultant. Now in order to work out what R is, and they're going to need to use trigonometry. So I need a few angles in this triangle. I know two sides and I actually know this angle in here. Because this angle, the angle between the 5 and the 6, would be this angle out here if I was to extend it. It would be 80 degrees. Okay, making up the 180 degrees around this point here. So this angle in here is going to be 80 degrees. We also will want to find the angle that that resultant makes with the 6 newton force. So we're going to want to work out this angle in here, which we'll call theta. So how are we going to do this? Well first of all, what I could do is use the cosine rule to get R, because we're dealing with a non-right angle triangle. So if we were to do that, I'll just put here by the cosine rule, what would we have? Well I'm assuming you're familiar with the cosine rule then. We've got that this side squared, r squared in other words, is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides, so 5 squared plus 6 squared, and then we subtract 2 times the product of these two sides, so that would be 5 times 6, and then times the cosine of the angle opposite the side you're trying to find. So times the cosine of 80 degrees. And if you do that on your calculator, what you'll find that you get is 50.581 and so on. Okay? And then we have to square root to get r, so r is going to be equal to the square root then of 50.581 and so on, and you end up with 7.112 and so on. And if you round that, say, to two significant figures, that's going to be 7.1 newtons to two significant figures, two SF. All right? We also need to find out what angle theta is. So in order to do that, what we could do is use the sine rule. We'll just draw a line down here. If we were to use the sine rule, then start with sine theta, so we have sine theta divided with the opposite side, which will be 5, 
equals the sine of any other angle. Well, we've only got the 80 degrees here, so that'd be sine of 80 degrees divided by its opposite side, r. So with this, don't use the 7.1. Use the unrounded version, otherwise you're liable to have rounding errors. So we've got 7.112 and so on. And if you rearrange this by multiplying both sides by 5, you'll get sine theta equals 5 times the sine of 80 over 7.112. Then we need to take the inverse sine. So theta would equal the inverse sine of 5 times sine of 80 degrees, all divided by 7.112 and so on. And uh, if you do that on your calculator, you should find you get 43.816 and so on and if you were to round that say to one decimal place that would be 43.8 degrees so we just put 1 dp in there okay you could have also got this angle here by using the cosine rule because you know all three sides but I'll leave it up to you if you want to do that just to check that you get 43.8 but personally I prefer the sign rule for something like that. Okay well I did say that there was another way that we could have done this and that is by resolving. So what I'm going to do is just section this off because it's going to be a bit of a squeeze in here so we'll just do that down there. Okay what we're going to do is think of splitting the five newtons into two components. We're going to look at considering the forces acting in the horizontal sense and the vertical sense here. So we've got our angle. We know that okay this angle in here was 100 degrees but the one that would be useful to us really would be this one in here the 80 degrees. Just mark that in okay 80 degrees. So when it comes to Looking at this, we're going to consider what is the overall force upwards and what's the overall force horizontally. So we're looking at this as if we've got our particle and we've got some force acting to the right, which I'm going to call x newtons. We'll just mark that in. There you go. X newtons and we've got a force upwards of y newtons and that resultant is going to act somewhere through here now to get the horizontal force we're going to need to think about resolving horizontally so when it comes to resolving horizontally that horizontal force resultant force will be x but what we're going to need to do is split this force that's inclined to the horizontal direction, this 5 newtons, into two components. And those two components, if we just mark them in, will be this one here, which contains the angle of 80 degrees. And remember, when you have a force that contains an angle, it's cosine. So this would be 5 cosine of 80 degrees, and that would be measured in newtons. This component up here, at right angles to this one, doesn't contain the angle of 80 degrees, so it'll be the sine of it, 5 sine of 80 degrees, and that'd be measured in newtons. Okay, you could use that as 20 degrees and say 5 cos 20 degrees. You just get the same answer, but I always think that it's useful to work off the angle you're given. So I'm going to go for 5 sine 80 degrees. So when it comes to resolving to the right then, the resultant force to the right is x newtons and that's equivalent to the 6, okay, so it's going to be 6 plus 6 and then we've got this one acting in the opposite sense here, so it's going to be minus 5 cos 80 degrees. And as for this component, well that's at right angles to the direction that we're considering, so it'll have no effect. So if you work this out on your calculator, you'll find you get 5.1317 and so on. 
and that would be newtons. Now to get the y force here, the resultant force in the y direction, we're going to need to resolve in that direction. So if we resolve in the y direction, we've got y equals, well how much of these forces act in the y direction? Well it's only going to be the 5 sine 80, the component of this 5 newtons in the y direction. The 6 newtons and this component are perpendicular to it, so they have no effect. So it's just going to be 5 sine of 80 degrees. And again, if you work this out on your calculator, you'll get 4.9240 and so on, newtons. So how do we get the resultant force? Well, remember that when you have a diagram like this, what we have got is there's our particle. We can think of this then as the force of x newtons that way, followed by the force of y newtons upwards. And our resultant goes from here to here of our newtons. And to get our newtons, because this is a right angle triangle, we can find it by using Pythagoras' theorem. So that means that therefore r will be the square root of the sum of the squares of these two sides, x squared plus y squared. In other words, we just have to do 5.1317 and so on squared plus this value squared, 4.9240 and so on squared. And if you do that, you'll find that you get 7.1 newtons obviously the same answer as we had over here. I'll just round that then to two significant figures. And as for the angle that R makes with the 6 Newton force, that's this angle in here, which we'll call theta. And we can use trigonometry. Being a right angle triangle, I can say that tan theta equals y over x. Admittedly, I could use cos theta equals x over r or sine theta equals y over r. I'll leave it up to you, but normally we do tan theta equals y over x. So tan theta equals y over x, and that would mean that theta is the inverse tan of the y value over x. So in other words, 4.9240 and so on, divided by 5.9240. 1317 and so on. And if you work that out, you get exactly the same answers we've got here to one decimal place, 43.8 degrees to 1 dp. Okay, so I hope uh, you're happy with that and uh, you'll be able to do other similar problems. Okay.